Hello, everyone. Uh, a very warm welcome uh, for those uh, who are in Pakistan. Uh, good morning for us and for friends from US. Uh, good evening, or uh, for some, it's midnight almost. Uh, very welcome to this uh, webinar series. Uh, today we have a speaker from the National Center of Excellence in Geology in University of Peshawar, uh, Professor Dr. Samina Siddiqui, uh, who will be talking about petroleum systems in the Himalayan foothills, Pakistan, uh, oil production and cleanup techniques. So we are uh, looking forward and I now ask Bob to introduce the speaker and uh, take away the program. Bob, over to you, please. Yes, thank you, Irfan. And again, welcome to everybody. And thank you for joining us uh, from different parts of the world. Uh, before we get started this evening uh, or this morning in Pakistan, I just want to uh, remind us uh, our next speaker coming up next week is going to be uh, Jason Head from Cambridge University in the UK. And he's going to be speaking about the uh, reptilian fossils in the Shualiks. And then keeping with the paleontology theme, uh, the following week, uh, we've got Parth uh, Shohan from the India Institute of Science, Education, and Research in Chandigarh, and he will be talking about the hominid fossils, the request for hominid fossils in the Shualiks. Uh, so we've got two exciting talks coming up on paleontology, and after that, we have Lisa Tauts who will talk about magnetics. Uh, Peter Zeitler will talk about sediment provenance. And uh, we've got a variety of other speakers coming. So please do stay tuned and join us in these future presentations. Uh, today, it's our wonderful pleasure to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Samina Siddiqui, uh, who comes to us from Peshawar. Uh, she obtained her uh, PhD from the University of Wales in Aberystwyth. And uh, she studies uh, soil science and uh, the, uh, the distribution of different soil types in uh, Northern Pakistan, and she's been looking at hydrocarbon systems and remediate hydrocarbon spills. And it's a wonderful opportunity to, to branch out into, into soil sciences. And I think somebody needs to mute. If somebody's got some background, uh, please do mute your sound. Uh, but we've got um, an opportunity really to hear from the point of view of the active surface, the soil science, uh, that is so important, both in terms of the modern setting and, of course, preserved in the rock record. And, and one of the wonderful things about the Shualiks is that the, uh, the soils are, are documented. And we actually have heard several speakers, uh, Catherine Badgley, uh, Kay Berensmeyer, uh, and I think Gary Johnson also mentioned the characteristic soils in the, in the Shualiks. So, and those are paleosols or old soils. Uh, but we understand the old soils by studying the modern soils. So I'm going to turn the floor over to uh, Dr. Uh, Siddiqui, and she will uh, give her presentation. So welcome, Samina. Thank you very much, Professor Bob and uh, your team, for giving me an opportunity to present my uh, work. The title of my presentation is Petroleum Systems in the Himalayan Foothills, Pakistan, Oil Production and Cleanup Techniques. I am grateful to Dr. Ifanullah Jan and also my students, uh, Ms. Shehla and uh, Mr. Asim Shahzad, who helped me in executing the project uh, for the second part of this uh, presentation. Now, this presentation has been divided into two parts. First part uh, is the review of the Himalaya origin and total petroleum system in Pakistan. Pakistan has two dominant petroleum systems, which is Patala Namal Composite Total Petroleum System and Semper Group. Ghazji composite petroleum system and some 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 light I will put some light on the stratigraphy of this total petroleum system and how can this total petroleum system or the hydrocarbon generated from these systems can be uh, become as uh, environmental hazard and how these environmental hazard uh, can be remediated using some economic low cost and environmental friendly techniques which is bioremediation. Now, uh, this is the map, tectonic map of Himalaya Origini adopted from Craig 2018 in his review. Himalaya Origini, as you all know, is the, has been uh, 
being 250 to 350 kilometer uh, wide and is stretched nearly 2400 kilometer between the Nanga Parbat Santex uh, to the northwest in Pakistan and the Namcha Burma Santex in the south east in Tibet and it branches eastward towards the uh, uh, India in in it sorry no not east is the west westward it branches to the Salman Kirtar fold belts in Pakistan and eastward to the Indo Burma ranges in the eastern Indian Bangladesh and Myanmar. So this petroleum sister this Himalaya origin originally remained an interesting area for the petroleum geologies because of its tectono sedimentary uh, basins and some stratigraphy setting, oil and gas uh, pockets, source rocks and reservoir rocks, and it has been explored worldwide, even in Pakistan. And we can see here in this uh, um, map, the sub Himalayan region, which is Potuhar Pohart region, is the hydrocarbon prone area, which has been uh, explored over the last several years for hydrocarbon generation. Now the sediments are, uh, as you all know, being a geologist, that the thick sediments are of marine, deltic, lacustrine or terrestrial type. When we are going to design our degradation project or bioremediation project, once, it, once the oil or hydrocarbon is spilled over the terrestrial land, because I'm focusing on the impact, environmental impact of terrestrial land, of this oil, then this uh, the type of this sedimentation is very important because these sediments, whether they are derived from marine uh, marine uh, uh, type or they are deltic type, like a stream or terrestrial, they are the good source of the organic matter. The organic matter is usually derived from C3 and C4 plants, which I am going to discuss in my next slide. So that these thick sediments, which are marine or deltanic or both or terrestrial marine sediments in Kohar Potuhar base, basin of uh, greater than 5000 meter of infracambrian neo protogenic uh, proto protozoic to early Cambrian to Eocene age with a major breach in deposition between the or, or division and the Carboniferous. The Portuhar uh, petroleum system is classic evaporates of lower Cambrian, marine and deltic shales of Jurassic, Triassic and Permian, marine shales of Paleocene, the shallow marine shales of the Eocene Patala formation uh, uh, ranging in thickness from 20 to 180 meter and are the probable predominant oil source. If we if we look at these four uh, um, uh, four four types of these uh, clastic evaporates or Cambrian, lower Cambrian sedimentation. Then we look, uh, we, we are here clearly it's indicate that shales are the most probable sediments uh, found which are oil prone. So if these shales when has been explored, uh, sorry, when uh, oil drilling or rigging is going on and these shales are being explored for this uh, uh, petroleum, hydrocarbon generation and of course the waste is generated. So the type of the waste will have shales, mostly shale in nature and the oil which is generated if 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 their depositional environment or the sedimentary type is marine, then of course it will have different type of hydrocarbon present in it than the terrestrial and that will affect the rate of degradation and the designing of the experiment for bioremediation of this type of crude oil or the oily sludge which is generated from during explore, oil exploration. So this is the main focus. That's why I have given these slides. I don't want to give you more detail because most of you will know about it. So these thick sediments, when we are going to look at the sediment type, which I've discussed already, marine and lacquer strand that of course, they are a very good organic matter source. If it's C3, uh, which is derived from uh, algal uh, lipids and nitrogenous compounds, then the N-alkanes petroleum compounds, which is composed of N-alkanes, paraffin, uh, aromatics, naphthalene, saturated, unsaturated hydrocarbons. So the source of these uh, organic matters, algal. So it means that, that if we are going to design some of the uh, experiment, we have to design for those 
those microbes which are capable of degrading uh, these type of hydrocarbons. It's not only that the straight chain hydrocarbons are present in petroleum compounds, but there are longer, longer uh, chain length hydrocarbons, some acyclic isopronides, pristine phytane, and some, of course, aromatic compounds which are present, but may be present in traces. Some of these hydrocarbons are easily degradable, some are uh, severely degradable, some are rapidly degradable, some are medium degradable. So those uh, uh, those uh, uh, alkanes which are uh, with the carbon chain length of C25 to C37, these are plant vaccines which are derived from cellulose and lignin over a longer period of time. Of course, there are depositional environment, suitability of temperature, presence of uh, oxygen taken by the anaerobic microorganism which are present in the deep reservoir, and they take it from the sulfate rock oxygen or from nitrate which is present or carbonate and then they do the process and slowly organically these are converted into the these carbon chain uh, which which can be in the form of NK, NLK or in the aromatic I am not giving that this, this table is very long so only few of the type of uh, carbon chain length has been uh, uh, presented here and just only give you an idea about what are the organic matter source and what are the sedimentation and the carbon chain length and how we are going to degrade when these are spilled over the terrestrial a surface. Now this is the biodegradation which is adopted from Wagner uh, Wenger uh, to 2012 and here you can see that the NLKs which are derived from uh, depending on the chain length in it this chain length can be shorter. It started from C10 to uh, C20, C30 and it can be N paraffins which range up to C44. So we here in this table uh, on our uh, right side, we can see that the, these are started from medium to high biodegradable rate. It means that the chain length uh, and straight chain length, even straight chain length, if they are, they are having uh, greater carbon number and chain length increases, then their biodegradation rate uh, scale is also increasing. So they are difficult to degrade even by the microorganism that we are using. So we have to have special uh, those microorganisms which uh, which are used as a remediation technique to degrade these longer chain, uh, including with other uh, carbon chain, uh, which can be uh, alkyl cyclohexane. If we look at the alkyl cyclohexane, then this is hexane group, uh, and you can see that the number here given is four. It means that they are nearly to severely degradable or very less degradable or they need uh, more time, either more time or to degrade naturally. But natural degradation of this compound is very slow process. That's why remediation techniques has been recommended to speed up the process to, so that the time scale for degrading uh, of degrading natural uh, degradation can be uh, accelerated. Isopronides, isopronides are branch chain. These can be pristine, phytane, even uh, farnesine, non-farnesine, non-pristine. And these are also severely degradable because one or the other thing is then the straight chain length increases, the rate of degradation increases. Isopronide, if the branch branches are increases within a petroleum, uh, petroleum compound, then the degradation rate increases. Similarly, if we have a look to the hopens, which are the biomarker and which are used for the de uh, for uh, uh, developing, uh, establishing the relationship between soil and uh, sorry, source rock and uh, oil, then these you can see that these are severely degradable. So these are seven uh, or eight, and even even uh, hopens are reaching to nine. So they are very severely, although they are present in very minute quantity, but they are severely degradable. Uh, compound and they may be toxic when present over, over a long period of time. Similarly, if I have a look to the aromatic, aromatic are benzene ring. They, here I'm just showing only the naphthalenes. Naphthalene has uh, six uh, benzene ring and then dimethyl, methyl, their, their rate of degradation you can see is five, which means that they are nearly too severe, but when uh, tetramethyl, depending on the branches attached to the benzene group, increases, then the degradation rate also increases. So these are some of these compounds which are present in the petroleum uh, uh, petroleum compound, whether it's a crude oil or oily sludge, which has been explored from underneath the surface and then, then dumped over the surface and then become an environmental hazard. 
Now Himalaya Orangini and but total petroleum system. There are two dominant petroleum system: Patala Namal composite system, which is Kohat Potohar, which is the hydrocarbon prone area, where is Samba Guru or Gazi uh, composite system, Indus and Salman Kirtha Georgica province, which is the uh, gas prone area. There are some oil wells in Hyderabad and uh, 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 and Badin area. But uh, it is dominated by the gas uh, gas uh, generation uh, uh, pockets, and where uh, Kohat uh, Kohat Potohar uh, province or Kohat Potohar plateau is uh, mainly generating crude oil. Neshpa is one of the most productive um, crude oil well, which is in Kohat. Now here you can see uh, this is also the uh, the um, map which is adopted from Craig. He has a very good review about the petroleum system in Himalaya Orjani. So these are we can have a look to the Potuhar and Kohat uh, um, geological province, which is hydrocarbon prone hydrocarbon prone area. Here is the list of so many oil wells has been uh, drilled. And is still search for new oil wells. Some of them have been abandoned, and some of them still search for new oil wells has been uh, on its way. And sub Himalayan is the um, sorry, sub Himalayan is the uh, the <coughs> geology which is underneath this uh, Potohar Pohat um, plateau. Now this this map is showing the journalized uh, oil. Uh, oil wells which is in Potuhar and Kohat areas and Patan and Namala is the hydrocarbon generation system. First oil well was dig in 1866 in Kundar and then first uh, commercial discovery was made in 1915 in Khor, uh, Potuhar region. Quite a number of oil wells has been drilled. Khor is the, they have different <coughs> formation and of course uh, the reservoir uh, differs uh, from oil well to oil well. And Skeser and Murray formation are the reservoir for core, and it will be different for if I are going to to talk about Tooth or Dulian or Dakni or Fimkasar, they have different uh, reservoir of where oil has been trapped. So still today there are several uh, oil well uh, exploration is going on, and some of them have been become abundant. Now this is some of the work of my student, uh, he, which is unpublished data. We have taken uh, the <clears throat> the we have taken the uh, samples from Patala, Chijali, and Datta formation underneath these. Uh, of course, from the OGDCL, we requested, and the total organic carbon S1 and uh, rock wall analysis and uh, has been performed. And this is giving an overview about the uh, TOC. And Patala, Chichali, and Datta formation. We know that Datta is uh, Datta is one of the uh, reservoir uh, in Pohat area, and Patala is also um, also that uh, formation which is which is hydrocarbon uh, prone um, reservoir in this uh, North Potohar area. Sorry, second is uh, second is the Sambar Guru uh, Ghazji hydrocarbon generation system. It includes the lower and middle and uh, upper part of the Indus upper Indus Basin and in include the southwestern Kohat Plateau and much of the Salman Kitra geological province. The area of the total petroleum system is characterized by the relatively flat floodplain of the Indus Basin to the east and uplifted and folded mountainous areas of Potuhar, Kohat, Surgar, Suleiman, and on the north and west of this area. So uh, is the uh, as I've already told you that this is more mostly the gas prone area, although some of the uh, oil uh, wells are also there have been explored. And the Sui gas field in the Saliman Ketar Fold and John Kutar was the first discovery outside the Kohar Potuhar um, Plateau. And it was discovered in 1950s, Uch 1955, Mali gas 1957, Zoo gas 1950. Four. If we have a look here on the legion, then it is showing that the neogene sedimentary rocks are mostly the, the sedimentary rocks or the generalized geology of these area where this has been explored for oil and gas production. Now here, these are the upper, what are the stratigraphy, uh, stratigraphy of these uh, Sember group 
upper indus basin is uh, lower indus basin middle and upper and shivalik is one of the recent uh, sorry the recent uh, top leading the formation then followed by rawalpindi and showing the some of the oil seep or oil oil pockets there and then the most oil pockets which we have find in is of uh, shale siltstone and sandstone in nature and uh, so when um, uh, the carogen type is uh, carogen type 3 it is mostly gas prone area not the uh, oil prone area and some of the oil pockets are also there so if we look at the stratigraphy of pohar potohar plateau and also this simber guru uh, potohar we can see that mostly the sandstone as far as uh, i can see from the stratigraphy and the shale are the are the uh, particle size or we can say the we we, we call it the texture of those uh, reservoirs so once these sandstone are of course with the mud which they are using for drilling when when it is dumped over the surface then it means that uh, the it's not only the crude oil that has been dumped it it is including some of this uh, most of the reservoir rock including with the mud that they are using for drilling whether it's potassium or other mud and then crude oil characteristics too and the environment uh, the, the the my uh, the sediment types it if it's marine sediment then we know that what type of uh, if if let's suppose if shale is or uh, is marine sediment uh, and the organic matter type is c4 then the uh, type of compounds which we will found in petroleum and crude oil will range from an alkane more and less aromatic compounds will be present in it and this is uh, uh, in pakistan what we are uh, we have studied that the crude oil or the oily sludge uh, produced or dumped uh, it's mostly uh, alkaline in nature and aromatics are present but they are present in traces so the greater portion of the oil is alkaline and the viscosity of of course differ the viscosity of course of uh, also depend on the carogen or bitumen type uh, most of the geologists know that i don't need to talk about that more so this also affect our rate of biodegradation and designing an experiment to degrade this completely over a short period of time now this work i am grateful uh, to uh, dr ifan for his geological for his support for geology in this executing this project <clears throat> which is funded by uh, uh, hsc and my two students uh, these are my student asim shahzad and shaila who had their phd and these are some of the sites uh, which are environmental hazards and these are the uh, in the oil field site this oily waste sludge which has uh, been um, drilled from the the oil during oil exploration and dumped in an open pit although these uh, <clears throat> there are some protective <clears throat> measurement has been taken but it's still there are long way to go to remediate these sites there are several incident happen all around the world in pakistan several incidents one of the most important incident which is which was happened in 2013 is the uh, tasman uh, uh, ferry which has uh, which has spilled a large of oil uh, at the karachi uh, shore and it has it has caused severe damages and still now there are oil globules uh, in the uh, beach we can find that because uh, uh, because of uh, less degradation rate of these and perhaps the technology is not advanced enough that it can remediate it immediately this whether is marine spill or spill or terrestrial i am talking about the surface <coughs> surface degradation sub surface degradation will involve very costly and sub surface degradation involves some of the uh, the uh, excavation and some of the uh, other uh, physical techniques which has not been i suppose uh, applied here in pakistan so what are the environmental effect of this oil uh, spill whether it is accidentally spilled because of, or it's leakage of uh, pipeline rupture or it has been dumped during oil exploration over the surface these all are the environmental hazard why these are called an environmental hazard it is more likely because these are com composed of those compounds which are toxic and phytotoxic and when it seeps down into the uh, un, uh, uh, un beneath the surface terrestrial surface then in, it can float over the ground water 
and then from one area to another area it can contaminate the rivers and of course then the sea when water falls river water fall into the sea so it means that there is chain connection of these uh, spill on one side and then we can have the effect for the very far away of these oil spills similarly if an uh, if an agriculture land is become contaminated because of these oil spills then it's very difficult to reclaim this or remediate that soil and of course the soil what happens to the soil soil get sterilized its health and fertility is affected microbes which are indigenous microbes present very important for performing different action like nitrogen nitrification denitrification for carbon cycling these all my all uh, system or all carbon cycle is disturbed so it is very important to remediate these uh, sites and lots of uh, people are working on this how to remediate these contaminated site rapidly using economic low cost oh, sorry economic environmental friendly technique that has not have any environmental hazards So these are some of the glimpses of the oil site at Potuhar and Kohat Plateau, where these, uh, where the samples have been uh, taken. The project was designed to uh, to develop a microbial formulation and, and then apply this microbial formulation to degrade petroleum hydrocarbons, which are present in the oil spill at laboratory scale under controlled temperature. and some of the the nutrient uh, which we have given so that the bio stimulation of these can be uh, occur rapidly so we wanted to find out what will have going to happen to these oil what type of uh, compounds are present in it and how uh, we are going to which type of uh, microbes we are going to have use uh, and how which type of microbial formulation we are going to prepare to degrade these uh, hydrocarbons over a short period of time you can see this is some of the glimpses that this is uh, this is the leakage from the uh, oil well site uh, or dumping site so you can see here soil is such a thick it is covered with uh, oil and then you cannot even grow even cannot walk uh, all the soil is made up of uh, you know clay silt and sand the core spaces is filled there is no oxygen and oxy condition are created microbial activity is stopped or retarded inhibited and you cannot even germinate any uh, uh, any crop if we leave this it will take years and years and maybe it will never degrade because the rate of degradation is extremely slow naturally so here you can have a look when oil spill depending on the oil viscosity but the uh, but oil field side all the all the oils are very viscous and highly viscous so they are <clears throat> down one pen penetration is uh, vertical penetration is uh, slow then the lateral penetration horizontally it can cover the soil surface if it cover the soil surface then underneath the surface the activities will not happen which is happening in the uh, uh, under normal conditions in the uncontaminated soil profile <coughs> so we have selected some of the uh, oil sites uh, misa kaswal kal satkal and temple has been taken from all over uh, potohar uh, plateau and these samples were um, uh, brought to the laboratory the scheme of study that we followed is the uh, is that experimental design which we performed here is that we have taken the oil sludge sample and uh, brought placed in the zipper bag brought it to the laboratory and then we uh, we of course <clears throat> dry it and then <clears throat> we extract it through socolate extraction and then we run it on through gcms first we, we separate these uh, different groups of hydrocarbons through um, silica gel column and then that can be that liquid form will was run over gcfid or gcms and then and we would know about the type of hydrocarbon present in it so it's not only the microbe we have also used the plant and the isolation of microbes and screening of microbes are also take place and then microbes have been isolated using uh, their uh, uh, protocol microbial isolation and then streaking streaking plate techniques are used to streak that and then the streaking several times streaking has been carried out in order to isolate only one single colony and then dna extraction has been done and pcr sequence 16s 
um, our RNA sequences has been done and the genera of the microbes were identified and then these genera of microbes were individually being tested <clears throat> their efficiency to degrade this uh, petroleum hydrocarbons which we which we found in our sample so uh, if uh, if we have a look here then uh, <clears throat> The soil has A horizon, which is 0 to 15 centimeter thick, and the B horizon is below 15 to 30 centimeter. And the GC FID chromatogram here is showing uh, a range of hydrocarbon uh, alkanes. Here, the, the longer peaks are showing the alkane, which is start from C10 to C30. And, the, and here we can see these are the aromatic or isopronides present in it, and C17 and C18 uh, are here, this, this one and this here is the uh, phytane and C7, uh, C8, uh, 17 and uh, sorry, pristine and C17 and phytane and C18, which are their emerging time is same. Uh, they emerge, C17 emerge with C, uh, C with pristine and C18 emerge with uh, phytane. So they are the same, uh, more or less same time of emergence. So this is the GCFID of the B horizon. These alkanes which I'm showing here, the slowly and gradually, the mid chain alkanes, uh, and then there are longer chain alkanes. These shorter chain alkanes are very toxic and they are rapidly degraded. Toxic for the plants to grow, toxic for the microorganism, inhibit and uh, affect the soil health. The type of microorganisms that we have found uh, or isolated using uh, uh, microbial protocol and DNA uh, hybridization is quite a number. 18 number of strain or 19 number of strain has been isolated only one, one of by my, one of my student, uh, Ms. Shaila. And uh, we have found that the bacillus is the genera and the bacillus pumulus exequio uh, bacterium was the, um, uh, was the only uh, uh, type of uh, genera which we have isolated and their potential have not been yet tested for uh, bioremediation and very rare uh, previous literature has been available. So we we, uh, we made uh, a consortium with uh, uh, with uh, with a number of these uh, microbes. Um, those efficiency has been tested in the laboratory whether they are being able to degrade the hydrocarbon uh, in harmony or not. Otherwise we will not be if if one uh, if one bacterial uh, genera uh, genera or strain inhibit other bacteria or pathogenic to that bacteria we cannot use it so they were they were living in uh, close coordination that's so that's why we have selected these uh, uh, these bacteria which i'm going to show uh, later what happened to microbes is that microbes play a very important role in the in, in degradation uh, or in <clears throat> In normal routine uh, life, microbe has the, uh, there is no microbe, there will be no life in soil. So there is a lake phase when any contamination, particularly with reference to oil, there is a lake phase. <clears throat> that lake phase can be for years if it has been remains as such without any uh, remediation techniques adopted or the practices adopted. This lake phase can be a day can be two day depending upon the viscosity of the oil and also the quantity of the oil and if it is being dumped continuously in the same area then of course the lake phase very high these microbes which i have shown that they have been uh, isolated from hydrocarbon contaminated soil some of them uh, are also present in uncontaminated soil because these are indigenous microorganisms they become they become, uh, they they go on into dormant state and they are inactive. That's why the degradation rate is very slow or sometimes uh, inhibited because these microbes are not uh, in action lack of, because of lack of oxygen, lack of nutrient once oil is spilled on the surface. So main focus was how to reduce this lake phase and uh, which type of microbes we have to use. This is the phylogenetic tree because once we isolate microbes, we have to register it. So we can say that they have given the succession number and uh, uh, which is uh, uh, succession number has been given uh, to those microbes uh, which uh, I have shown you uh, earlier in the slide. Now when we have uh, uh, take the extract, succulent extract of these uh, oily sludge, 
which has taken from cohort port to heart and analyzed through GCMS. We have find that it contain uh, carbon rage started from C13 to C16 and non fluorescent and pristine and phytane. C34 is the longest chain, carbon chain which we find and the concentration varies. Of course, concentration varies and their concentration um, is also uh, calculated through GC GCMS chromatogram. Even with GCFID, we are using some of the techniques to, uh, uh, to calculate the quantitative analysis of uh, these uh, compounds which are present using the formula. Now, if we can see here <clears throat> the deep uh, Chanda deep, mostly we can see that the uh, uh, short chain hydrocarbon and C13 to N16 are present in uh, uh, less quantity compared to C19 to C29. So it's mean that most of the um, oil oily sludge are dominated by the middle chain uh, hydrocarbons, and middle chain hydrocarbons are are less toxic and they can remain and persist for a longer time and they are slow to degrade as I have shown you in my degradation chart earlier in my presentation. Now how we are going to what we do and how we are going to remediate that at laboratory scale. So the oily sample has been taken, microbes has been isolated and then the pot experiment has been performed. Different treatments has been uh, has been uh, added to this oily sludge. 60% uh, of oily sludge was mixed with the uh, control soil and one, one treatment was uh, uncontaminated or remained controlled, which is oily sludge. The second treatment was microbial consortium was prepared with <clears throat> microbial consortium was prepared with bacillus uh, pseudomonas um, exico orticum and lysophyrus uh, ly lysini bacillus fusi forus and then Mm, these uh, microbes have been, uh, this uh, consortium has been prepared and then added, sprinkled over the soil surface and mixed thoroughly with hand to the soil in which we have added oily sludge. And then the, uh, and then uh, nutrients were added in order to accelerate uh, our uh, nitrogen and phosphorus uh, concentration because nitrogen and phosphorus are also playing very important role in providing the nutrient source for these microbes to degrade these hydrocarbon rapidly. So we wanting to know whether our consortium is suitable uh, for degrading this hydrocarbon. How long will it take to degrade these hydrocarbon and uh, whether nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizer in combination or alone uh, can enhance the degradation rate or not. So our, <coughs> our, our hypothesis was that oily sludge <clears throat> is composed of C19 to C34 and alkane. Aromatic compounds were very pre were present in very minute quantity. It cannot be calculated and uh, that's why I'm not showing you about the aromatic compounds. Only N alkanes was the focus and also the isopronide was the focus of this degradation study. So we have seen that uh, how long will it take for the total hydrocarbon to be degraded. We have seen uh, here this is the oily sludge uh, which is uh, in which we have not added any treatment. This is this is considered as a control. When consortium of these microbes uh, were added or sprinkled over these, we have seen after 60 days, we see that the concentration of these um, LLKs has been reduced and more or less uh, 70 to 80 percent of degradation has been achieved from this consortium. And the lake phase has been reduced from uh, uh, to 60 days. But when we have, but when we have used uh, the same um, oily sludge with the fertilizer, only fertilizer consortium was not added. We can say that the, uh, the time required for this micro uh, for this uh, uh, fertilizer nutrients in order to uh, indigenous microorganisms that 240 days. And similarly, consortium with fertilizer is also not very effective. So our conclusion for this uh, research work was that that the consortium when uh, when uh, microbes added alone to the oily sludge, they can increase this rate of degradation. Then second thing we know, we want to know what happened to bacteria. Of course, consortium addition is the uh, inoculum that we are adding. There are some indigenous microbes which are already present in the soil, even in the oily sludge. They are inactive or inhibited. But when we are pro uh, providing them additional substrate in the form of this uh, consortium and fertilizer, 
then what will happen? These these microbes are not going to live for 60 days because what happens that the microbes uh, microbes are being eaten by other microbes and then the biomass is created. That myobas become a separate substrate for other uh, for other group of uh, bacteria. And similarly, when we are seeing here uh, the hydrocarbons which are degraded here, these hydrocarbons once degraded, if we are talking about uh, NC10. Then it is degraded into fatty acid and carbon dioxide and water. That fatty acid or has or has become a source for other microorganisms, uh, and then it provides a substrate. So they, the 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 chain is continue and the activity is going on. It's not that we are going to add this consortium every day or every five day or every ten day. We are just adding once, once in the beginning, and then we are going to see the effect slowly and gradually. Although we have not monitored that what happened to microbial biomass because microbial biomass must have increased and they might have provided the substrate for these if the consortium uh, activities has not been that affected. So it's all similarly the hydrocarbon substrate are also uh, the byproduct of these hydrocarbons may become a source for these uh, uh, microbes uh, as a carbon uh, and then carbon substrate and then they multiply and they divide and they degrade these. They have, that two aspects has not been studied. We're not the focus of our um, study and all the most of the bioremediation studies are using these consortium. So what happened to the bacterial colony? Of course, uh, sorry for the, the this colony forming unit because I have used the graph pad and this is not 10,000. It is uh, it is 2.2 uh, into 10 raised to power. Uh, uh, four, which are naturally present uh, in uh, so microbial population is increasing with respect to time. When consortium was added, you can see here all this sludge plus consortium has increased the uh, the, um, the number of bacterial colony and that bacteria increase in this bacteria shows us that the microbial life is active and they are degrading this hydrocarbon. So one of the uh, indication what I have told you earlier about the microbial biomass and carbon substrate, so it's, it's mean that this carbon substrate is available for the microbes to continue their activity for degradation of these uh, compounds. Now microbes is not only uh, the uh, can be used, but when microbes react with uh, plants, they are developing a very interesting in, uh, interaction and that's called rhizoremediation. Phytoremediation is only plant. Plants using plants only for uh, degrading oily uh, sludge hydrocarbon is really not successful. Phytoremediation techniques is successful for heavy metal, uh, for uh, for heavy metals uh, contaminated soil, but it is not only but it's not recommended independently as uh, bioremediation to remediate these. The reason for uh, plants is that plant cannot survive under extreme uh, environmental condition, which is oil contaminated soils because lack of oxygen is present of plants cannot grow. But we did, did that. My other student Asim has done that. They have used uh, maize and alpha alpha plants and uh, for rhizoremediation technique, rhizoremediation means rhizosphere and how rhizosphere can become active by by using this uh, that consortium or microbial anachronome. So different consortium has been used and then the plants were grow in order to uh, to evaluate the effect of consortium plus fertilizer. Uh, sorry, consortium plus uh, plants. The two plants were used alpha 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 alpha. We know that nitrogen symbiotic bacteria and it had nodules on its roots and it provides extra nutrient for the microbes and maize of course is the um, the fodder which is uh, which can uh, tolerate uh, this extreme uh, oil contamination so that has been used and the for rhizoremediation experiment we have conducted uh, a long term experiment but this is all laboratory experiment we have not performed any outside uh, the laboratory the experiment so bacterial consortium is was prepared from uh, bacillus cirrhosis, bacillus anchitudinous, bacillus comomonas, and stentofomonas maltophilicia. We can see that what we have done that separately or independently, these have been used. Untreated sludge, we can see that here is the colony forming unit in untreated sludge. Uh, the uh, sludge with uh, at five days was greater, and then at 10 days, the degradation was uh, slow. And here, bacillus independent, uh, uh, independently, each uh, strain 
uh, was added not the only the consortium consortium uh, consortium was also prepared but independent effect of these uh, bacterial strain with fertilizer with alpha alpha was studies and also with fertilizer plus alpha alpha so we come to know that one of the the most important uh, uh, strain which is giving you uh, giving us a uh, most promising result is uh, bacillus altitudinous and this is this this bacillus altitudinous uh, with alpha alpha is giving us uh, very good results of more than 80% of 70% uh, of um, uh, oily sludge or crude oil has been degraded but remember that the concentration is low we have used low concentration of uh, uh, oily sludge in order to and this in the previous uh, uh, research paper in the previous uh, slide we have used 60% of oily sludge mixed with soil but here we use 20% uh, of uh, oily sludge with soil and then these uh, microbes were independently with alpha 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 was grow on the petri dish and the seedling of alpha alpha was grown on the pot in order to see whether they are survive or not. so that they, they survive with this best survival of these alpha alpha was uh, uh, obtained from bacillus uh, altitudinous now what happened to the total petroleum hydrocarbon who is uh, the most uh, efficient uh, although all of them are but who is the most efficient among these four selected uh, uh, bacterial strain that can degrade uh, the hydrocarbons rapidly so we have found well again bacillus altitudinous uh, is giving promising result but all of them are uh, can be uh, can be used as a consortium because of their uh, no negative or pathogenic effect on each other then what happened that we have used uh, we have uh, used and treated these soil oily sludge oily sludge with fertilizer oily sludge with consortium oily sludge plus consortium and fertilizer oily sludge with alpha alpha oil treatment separate treatments has been used and we come to know that oily sludge plus alpha 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 and consortium is giving us promising results even at 7 days of uh, uh, application these uh, some of these hydrocarbons has been degraded and more than 40 to 50% of degradation has been achieved similarly maize is also but alpha alpha has given, shown the most potential uh, crop uh, which can be used uh, um, for uh, with oily sludge because of the presence of plant uh, promoting uh, rhizosphere bacteria uh, compared to maize these are the some of the results that we have seen and then we have prepared the consortium from these uh, uh, these uh, study and this consortium is ready for the for commercialization and can be applied um, uh, commercially to remediate uh, larger uh, surface uh, degrade uh, larger scale of oil spills around the country this is my student who asim shahzad who won the you know in the third innovation to innovation summit in 2014 uh, with this project and he has the uh, in biotechnology there were 500 posters and uh, he he won the third prize in that 500 poster poster in biotechnology because of this innovation that he has done and the and patent has been also uh, granted national patent has been granted for this work so lot of uh, other uh, work is also going on some of these uh, uh, research papers if anyone interested can go through these research papers so am i fast or it's okay good hey, so it's good yeah we are okay okay yeah, yeah. so uh, i think it's yes, uh, it's it's a wonderful opportunity to uh, to look at the innovative techniques for uh, bioremediation and uh, i think we have some time here for some questions and answers and and maybe uh, uh, samina maybe i'll ask a question just quickly to get it started i'm i'm curious yep. to know if uh, if your team is uh, preparing some uh, field experiments where you might move outside of the laboratory and uh, try to conduct some bioremediation experiments in, in yes. some of the oil fields yes actually uh, we have been asked by several uh, companies 
uh, uh, to apply these, but they did not give us any response. And then we are uh, in contact with the OGDCL to allow us to use their uh, space for degradation study. But again, you know, my student had their PhD, they're gone. And then <laughs> I am the only one. And if I have a new fresh students, then I have to teach them. So I am I am I am very interested to use these uh, commercial this this consortium and the plants uh, outside the field in order to enhance the degradation of these uh, at oily sludge site. Because one of the uh, complaint we are receiving from Carl side that these uh, this oil oil has been spilled and they have uh, spilled uh, they have spoiled their agriculture land and the uh, and the company is paying uh, several uh, thousand uh, penalty every year see when we yeah. are going to settle hopefully shortly i am planning this year in summer to do some field work with these techniques along with my students who are working now in different universities yeah good Yeah, I, I have a, a comment or a question, uh, Dr. Semina. Uh, what do you think is the is the is the administration's response or the government's response as far as the you know these uh, um, oil spillage and uh, all these things are concerned? Because uh, is there any regulatory control? Any any sort of thing? No, 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 doctor, no, doctor. If one, uh, you know that uh, there are uh, there are legislation. Yeah. EPA has put the legislation, but to implement those legislation, there is no strategy. Mm. We can only submit up. We cannot even if uh, if we are going to uh, report this, this will not be taken any consideration from yeah. the uh, policy makers, but it has to be a part of the. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very, it's a very. Uh, it's a know, very complex issue because uh, critical, uh, critical, for, yeah. them, for them, contaminated remediation of contaminated soil is not an important, but now from now till the next DK 2030, you will see there is no agriculture land will be remaining as you yeah. see. So yeah. these waste, waste, this, these waste soils need to be remediated. And this is not only that the consortium that we have prepared is only for the oil contaminated soil. This can be replicated in drought resistant because some of these species are Sodomonas putudia is the drought resistant species. This is from the saline salinity control species. Biofertilizers have not been used in KP, but biofertilizers are used around in Punjab area. But in KP, uh, there are vast land in dry areas where we can use these microbes mm -hmm. to grow those varieties which are drought resistance. What do you think? I mean, if, if you know, if I continue my question, what do you think are the challenges if you want to to take your experimental model into the real world or the field? What are the challenges? Apart from funding, obviously, we all there are several a... challenges. There are several challenges because you know the laboratory experiments are different than we are performing an experiment in field. Yeah. First of all, that you have to get the permission from the uh, from the owner of land. Maybe he yeah. would not like. It's 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 their their mindset. Second is that scientifically, scientifically, we can do the surface remediation from this technique, surface uh, spill. But if it is subsurface spill, then we have to have a long term uh, like plants. We have to use long rooted plants that mm -hmm. the roots of those plants <clears throat> has been penetrated deeper into the soil so that they can remediate that uh, that area. And we uh, scientifically uh, everyone is looking for the time. Nobody wants to give you your field for three two years for experimentation. Mm -hmm. They just want a rapid response from this. But anyway, uh, we can try and we can and there's, do that. And there is probably a, <clears throat> a conflict of interest because um, obviously if you have leased out your field to a multinational company who are drilling there, who yeah. really cares about what's happening to the environment or what's yeah. going to be the scenario like after 10, 10 years, whether those cells will be productive or not, fertile. It's, it's 
really a very big issue because uh, you know I can I can't imagine this problem, and it needs to be it needs to be obviously it needs to be disseminated to the to the policymakers to the government officials, so that you know yeah. something can come out of that. Yeah, I understand that. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, we have a question from Gary Johnson. Yeah. Gary, please. Yeah. Hi, Professor. <laughs> please. Gary, you have to I'm unmute unmuted. your... I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> unmuted now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question that's more, uh, I suppose, academic than practical. Uh, I've wandered around in the Shigar Range and the... Uh, Sugar rings, Shingar and Sugar range in the Trans Indus. Yes, yes. And I've noticed a number of natural oil seeps, mm -hmm. uh, some of which are quite extensive. Um, and certainly, many of the historic uh, core oil fields uh, were, were first uh, recognized as potential because of natural oil seeps. Now, maybe this is the academic question, but these mature oil seeps, which have been going on for thousands of years, uh, are being remediated in natural environments by naturally occurring uh, microbes. Uh, I wonder if there is a uh, study or a practicality at, at looking at some of these uh, historic uh, seeps to see uh, the effectiveness of certain of the microbes in uh, at least mediating some of the hydrocarbon components. Uh, I know at the ones I was seeing just north of Pizu in the transcend, it's, it's, it's pretty dead oil and uh, asphaltum, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. uh, so quite mature as a seep with most of the volatiles now gone, but mm -hmm what the bacterial component was or is to uh, self-remediate, to me, seems like a very interesting question. Uh, is there any possibility that your group might be uh, doing some of this work on these historic features? We have not yet planned, uh, Professor, but uh, this is a very, this is very interesting area. Yeah. Because, uh, Oil, oily waste pit site has been explored a lot, but the oil seep sites and then these mature uh, mature oil with <clears throat> with <clears throat> longer carbon chain and their degradation with the indigenous microbes which are present in it and isolated has not been yet studied. But this is also a very interesting area. And I suppose uh, I personally I'm very interested in uh, doing this in oil seeps now. Next project which I'm going to submit is about the oil seeps. How we can degrade, although these are mature and uh, they are there for years and years, maybe 100 years, maybe more than that. But we still have to think about how to remediate them using these microbes and how, uh, uh, how much portion of that uh, uh, hydrocarbon chain can be remediated because if we are going to look at the mature uh, oil seep site, 100% it will not be the crude oil. It might have a composition of different uh, uh, different uh, things uh, like uh, bitumen type. And then we have to extract oil and maybe the percentage of the oil which is extracted from these um, mature, uh, mature uh, oil seeps may be of different uh, com uh, petroleum contain different carbon chain length compared to those mature ones. So let's see. Hopefully, I have to do it for my for uh, this a next uh, project for my next PhD students. That sounds like a good one. Thank you very much. <laughs> see what result we can get because it's it might take years, a year or two years. And then laboratory scale study to me is very easy to do. But when we are going to apply, we all know that the field environment is completely different than the laboratory yeah. st studies. But sometimes you can get very successful results. 
for the laboratory study and when do you apply them in the field? Yeah. And uh, other thing worries me is that uh, uh, because you know uh, uh, that other thing worries me is about that I we don't want to spoil someone's agriculture land. This is these these microbes are harmless. These are environmentally friendly, and these plants are ha harmless too. That's why we are using those harmless or environmentally friendly technique. Let's see what tomorrow brings to us. Yeah, uh, uh, we have a comment or question from Catherine, Catherine Bajla. Thank you very much and uh, congratulations and thank you, Samina, for a wonderful talk. Um, I have a question about your experiments with corn and maize and your, your concoction. Um, you showed results that the um, alfalfa was, sorry, it was alfalfa and maize. The, um, you showed, your results showed that alfalfa was more, and the uh, concoction was more effective at grading the, the oil that you were using. And I'm wondering if you know why. Is it because of the deeper root systems of the alfalfa or the, the nitrogen fixing uh, compounds in the roots or something else? Well, uh, you uh, thank you very much, and it's a great pleasure talking to you. Uh, the reason why we have not tested that. We need to know about mm -hmm. what sort of nitrogen symbiotic bacteria has been increased with respect to time when these uh, alpha alpha are growing. The root are maturing with respect to time. We have to take the sample and then we have to uh, uh, study the microbial or the nitrogen symbiotic bacteria, but we have not done that. We have just studied these, these two parts. What you are talking about are very interesting, very important, and they need uh, to be carried out in order to evaluate the difference why this alpha alpha is responding more uh, towards the extreme environment, toward oil condition than maize. And this need a separate experiment, <clears throat> which was beyond the limit of this, and it is very laborious work. Because at day five, we have to take the sample. We are growing at day 10, and then we have to analyze and extract. And of course, the financial finance constraint was we have to uh, we have to study the soil and also the root and symbiotic bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria. For that purpose, we, we, uh, we have to again do the experiment. So this part is missing in this, but overall what we have noticed that the project was designed overall just to see the total hydrocarbon degradation by this alpha or alpha alpha or maize. The reason why alpha alpha is doing this has not yet been explored in this project, maybe in other projects. But this is very important that we got to know why alpha alpha is uh, responding uh, with microbes and what are those reasons? The uh, the thing is that there <clears throat> this is not, uh, uh, we have not tested the nitrogen symbiotic bacteria, but I have not mentioned uh, the uh, plant physiological experiment which has been performed. Maybe it can it can I can share the information with you. And it is the uh, POD. It is the oxidative system has been improved more in alpha alpha than uh, by these bacteria than maize. And it is SOD, uh, POD, and uh, um, oxidative uh, uh, potential of these alpha alpha, which has been tested. But in this experiment, in order to evaluate the plant's physiology and the plant response with these consortium and micro microbes independently, I haven't shared that data. That might be fulfill <coughs> the requirement, uh, uh, the question that you have asked, maybe because. They they improve the these microbes improve the SOD uh, for the alpha alpha more than maize, but the other aspect that nitrogen fixing bacteria or symbiotic bacteria or what happens to nitrogen whether it's converted into the nitrate and then nitrogen fixing bacteria that has not been uh, um, explored in this experiment. Is well, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope you'll get funding to do those experiments. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, funding important. is a uh, funding is a uh, climbing on a hill like here in PK. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting so worse. COVID has shaken all, all of us. Maybe you can I'm sure. talk to uh, the environmental protection. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and I I might wonder uh, if there might be some funding from the from the from the Gulf states. You know, this is a uh, this challenge of uh, exploiting resources in an environmentally safe way is a, a global challenge, of course. And uh, I'm just wondering if there might be uh, some organizations in the in the in the Gulf states in 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 Kuwait or or in in the, in the the Emirates, for example, uh, where there might be some international funding that might come in your direction. Well, if you if you are with me, then I have I have to worry about the funding. Then, <laughs> Professor, thank you very much. But you know that uh, perhaps I don't know how to how to find the ways to find the fundings. Perhaps there are no everything is through HEC independently. We cannot uh, approach to anyone, but I think we can approach to. But perhaps I'm slow. I don't know. Professor uh, Kasim Jan probably would like to add something. Yes, sir. Sir, assalamu alaikum. Uh, you will have to unmute your uh, mic. Me? Or, no, no. The, Can sir, you sir, do you that? My fault. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, sir. It's not it's okay. Right. Thank you very much. Your presentation was very good. I was. Uh, yes, sir. I. I think that uh, if if you urgently need some funding, and you yeah. can uh, submit a proposal, perhaps I can get something for you from the Pakistan Academy of Sciences. Oh, sir, great! You are great. Thank you very much, sir. No, very it's kind not actually. Very kind somebody, I'm somebody, somebody actually invited me. They have. They have some unspent funds in the Pakistan Academy of Sciences and the Secretary General talked to me the other day and he said, look, we have to we have to spend these these funds yeah. on some applied type of research. And can you think of something? Otherwise, uh, the time would lapse and we may not get the next installment of the funds. Yeah. So I was yeah. thinking just a while ago, I thought I should talk to Asif about it. But then here you are. You are working on an applied project, and if you are if you are really looking for quick money, yes, oh, sir, by all means, by all means, why not? All right, then we'll talk about it further. Okay, I think it will be about. Oh, sir, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Even in the evening, I can come and see you for project. Then, I am available at any time. You, after, <laughs> after, Anywhere. After, after your talk is over, I will yes. uh, I will get in touch with the uh, the secretary general. And, and uh, get to know if you would be interested in a project like that, and perhaps it would be about a couple of millions rupees. Okay, thank you. That will enough, sir. That will be keep running this project and my laboratory. It's good. Wonderful. Thank you very much, sir, for your kindness. Thanks a lot. Okay, so I think, Bob, that's pretty much it. Uh, you want to conclude it for tonight? And Yeah, I think. Uh, I think uh, one of the benefits of the seminar series is the sharing of information and the yeah, sharing of yeah. ideas. And I think that I think everybody in the audience must be somewhat impressed by this magic moment <laughs> here. We're yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dr. Thank Dr. you very Dr. much. Dr. All credit goes to you and Irfan. Irfan, you have supported yeah. me and CG. I cannot yeah, forget. So, I have to we, give credit to NCG because they have accommodated me, and uh, uh, this work has been possible for me. Yeah, and we, I we, learned a lot. Yeah, we hope and pray that your uh, project goes through the funding process, and you know you get some funds. Very, it's really yeah, important yeah. project. We understand it. Yes, it yeah. is very important. We have been lots. Lots of people have contacted us, even from Sindh area. But again, they say that we don't have the funds yeah, to continue yeah. this. Well, I know because people are not aware of the sensitivity of the issue, and I think yeah. it's really yeah. our duty to let the people know that you know it's not oil that you get; it's not only the the gas you get. It's the environment. <laughs> it's the more importantly your land, because a few years down the road it will be a very hard situation. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, let, let me just uh, let me just wrap up here. I 
Uh, uh, Bob, I think there is a uh, there is a comment from Professor Carlson Jans. We would like oh, to listen very to. Very quick one. Very quick one. Samina, can you can you please send me a a two hundred words of uh, narrative today? Just two hundred words, okay. and tell me okay. tell me who would, who would you like to collaborate with, uh, if you wish to, Irfan or someone else, so that then I okay. can take take it seriously with the people. Thank yes, you. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay, very much, sir. Thank you for your support. Thanks. Oh, you see, there is a fruit coming, uh, you know, of this webinar series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that one of the, just to sort of summarize, I think that uh, as we look at the uh, range of topics that we've discussed over the last several weeks or months, uh, there's a broad uh, range of of uh, disciplines that have been working here, looking at the shawaliks, and uh, I think the important thing to appreciate is that there's an applied component of what we're talking about and whether we're talking about better understanding the evolution of plants and animals, whether we're talking about the uh, earthquake hazards associated with the tectonic activity in the foothills of the Himalayas, uh, or whether we're talking about bioremediation. Uh, these are all topics where science is coming to the forefront. And I think that the opportunity for the Center for Excellence uh, in, in Peshawar to, to have a role to play is absolutely yeah. wonderful. And uh, I'm, I'm completely delighted that we are having this conversation. And I think it's going to be helpful to, to the whole community. So I'm yeah. going to thank, thank everybody for your, your participation uh, this morning and, and this evening here in the United States. And maybe, Irfan, if you want to say one or two last words just to close us off. Um, um, there's nothing much, uh, Bob. Obviously, we are. Uh, um, I really got delighted to know that uh, the, 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 the initial aim that we, uh, obviously, firstly Bob and then myself and then Mukhtiar Ghani started this webinar series was to bring people together so that there is uh, branching of collaboration, interaction, knowledge exchange for the better uh, scientific practices for the betterment of the humanity. So I think it's really uh, coming out and uh, that's a pleasure, obviously. And uh, we would like the people to attend the seminar series. Uh, we would like people to let us know about their talks they want to uh, to be included in this uh, webinar series. And as Bob said earlier, uh, we can always tune that uh, talk. Uh, it might be strictly in the webinar series that might be some somewhat you know, uh, inclined to the team. So we would really like to listen from the people if they want to include uh, as a speaker. And we would like you to attend this webinar series as much as you can and interact with community from across the world.